Hey, what's up, guys? Joel Benavides with the Block Squawk Podcast and Twitch stream, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, coming at you today on the 22nd of March. Sorry about that. Uh, 22nd of March on this 43rd episode. And um, we're going to run through uh, the movements. Uh, we're looking at Coin360 right now. Uh, it's a checkered market. Uh, as far as standouts go, nothing really uh, prominent. On the sell side, on the buy side, um, Cardano is a little up at 8%, just over 8%, and then also uh, bite them. Uh, but everything else is like, you know, uh, half a percent, one percent, quarter percent, two percent. So um, not really a whole lot of movement over the last 24 hours. And uh, I mean, it's not really uh, a ranging. I mean, it's like a it's like a like a ranging market. It's not a trending market right now. Um, so, but we'll take a look at that. Um, let's see, what are we gonna do? Let's get this out of the way so you guys can stare at. The, I just want to show you that. Uh, let's get you looking at the chart. <clears throat> yeah, and so uh, it looks like. Uh, Cardano is uh, lighting up on the uh, on the trading view uh, headlines for BTC USD, um, and uh, it's from uh, it's an article from FX Street. It says Cardano market overview: uh, Cardano to USD surges by 16% in one week. So that's the that's the one week uh, growth. Um, also, uh, strong, quote unquote, strong signals. This is from Crypto Globe. Strong signals, crypto winter might be over. Bitcoin could surge past 100,000, analysts argue. Uh, you know, and when you're looking at <clears throat> certain time frames, it, you know, it, it may look like that. Uh, w- when you look at it at others, it, it may not. So, um, but we're going to, we're going to get to uh, discussing uh, in my humble opinion, why uh, it's always important to keep like um, a sense of balance and a sense of questioning your own biases at the forefront of your mind at all times. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube uh, or listening to it right now or watching it right now on Twitch, you won't get the disclaimer that comes in the podcast. So, um, uh, but if you're listening to the podcast, you heard it already. So, I mean, just uh, it's the obligatory, you know, uh, this is not financial advice and this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor and uh, and you shouldn't listen to me about trading. If I, can't, if, I if I slip and I'm like, you guys got to fucking do this, don't do it. Uh, it's, uh, it's all for show and entertainment. So with that being said, let me tell you guys what the fuck you need to do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Now, um, I'm seriously, I'm kidding. Uh, don't listen to me about that. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm just a guy documenting my own journey really. Uh, and it's very early in my journey. Uh, so, uh, I think I said enough there. Uh, let's, uh, let's jump on over to Apogee Crypto. I use Apogee just because I like the way it aggregates, uh, the data from the market, but it's basically pulling the same data off of um, off of uh, coin market cap. So same numbers you guys get. Um, I'm gonna briefly rattle off uh, the 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 coins from 20 to 11 uh, without any like uh, specific data. I'll just I'll give you the 24 hour change, um, not the price, and then we'll get into the minutia on the top 10. Uh, Because I'm really trying to cut down that section of the podcast. Uh, I think uh, I think it's cumbersome. Uh, If you are listening uh, on YouTube, it's it's ultimately going to end up being historical data. Uh, And so, you know, it's good if you're listening like every day on the podcast or something like that. You know, it can be helpful driving to work or whatever. Uh, But uh, other than that, it really doesn't do much. So, um I think I'm going to try it that way. I'm always kind of like refining this stream. Uh, So, you know, little bits and pieces there. So, I mean, if you go back to like episode one or two, don't, by the way, because it's horrible. Uh, But, you know, it's a it's a process. 
So uh, let's uh, jump into the numbers here. Tezos, XTZ, uh, unseated NEM. Um, NEM was in the 20th place. Tezos is in there right now, XTZ. And they're actually down 4.82%. But I think the reason that they're showing up on the top 20 now is because their weekly growth was at uh, 70%. 70% growth for Tezos uh, over the last week. And so uh, that's one of those strong signals uh, that they were talking about over at FX Street. Um, so... Uh, that's why they're there. I hadn't done the, the the stream in a couple of days, so that's where we're where we're at. Ethereum Classic ETC in at 19. There's some there's some shit going down, guys. Uh, so uh, Te uh, Tezos XTZ in 20th by market cap, down 4.82 percent of the day. Ethereum Classic ETC in at 19th. That's up 1.78 percent on the day. Neo in at 18th. Uh, down, or I'm sorry, correction, up 1.67 points on the day. Ontology, ONT, in at 17th by market cap, up 1.62% of the day. Maker MKR in at 16th by market cap, up 2.28%. Uh, Empower Coin uh, still sharing the 15th slot with Dash. Uh, Empower Coin is up 48.6%. Um, those are kind of like odd numbers just because there's so many Empower tokens. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll cover more on Empower because it's kind of a, a weird thing. And, uh, and uh, I'm just going to leave it there for now. Uh, Dash uh, in it at 15th, uh, and they're up 0 0.6 points on the day. IOTA by the symbol MIOTA in at 14th, down 0.02%, so basically flat. Uh, Monero XMR in at 13th uh, by market cap, up 0 0.7 points on the day. Bitcoin SV, BSV in at 12th, trading at 66 87 that's up 1.53 percent on the day and uh, cardano ada i'll do cardano we'll start we'll start at 11 because i think cardano's uh uh important all things considered so let's uh let's start the data heavy speed version of the uh squawk here uh again uh it's the 22nd of march it's 607 p.m and this is the top 11 from coin market cap and apogee crypto so Cardano 88 in at 11th, trading at 5.8 cents. That's up 9.45 points on the day, up 15.36 points on the week, and trading a 24-hour trade volume was 119.9 million. Tether, or I'm sorry, Tron TRX in at 10th, trading at 2.2 cents, up 1.42 points on the day, down 1.92 points on the week, 24-hour trade volume 172.4 million. Tether USDT in at 9th, trading at 1 and 1, down 0.14 on the day, up 0.02 points on the on the week, and 24-hour trade volume was 7.9 billion stellar xlm in at eighth trading at 10 cents up 0 0.8 points on the day down correction up 0 0.5 points on the week 24 hour trade of volume 242.5 million binance coin bnb in at seventh trading at 15 and 31 up five point uh, up five and a quarter points uh, for the day and up 1.08 points on the week 24 hour trade of volume 150.5 million bitcoin cash bch in at sixth Trading at 158 and 64, that's up 2.46 points on the day, up 6.85 points on the week, 24 hour trade of volume, 381.4 million EOS by the same symbol in at fifth. Trading at three and 65, that's down 0 0.4 points on the day, down 2.63 points on the week, 24 hour trade of volume, 1.3 million. Litecoin LTC in at fourth, trading at 59 and 89, that's up 0 0.9 points on the day and flat for the week. Uh, 24 hour trade of volume is 1.6 billion. XRP by the same symbol in at third, that's Ripple trading at 31 cents. That's down a quarter point for the day and down one, nearly one and a half points for the week. 24 hour trade of volume was 684 million, 684.8 million, excuse me. Ethereum, uh, uh, Ethereum uh, ETH in its second trading at 137 and 57, up half a point for the day and down nearly a full point for the week. 24 hour trade of volume was 4.4 billion. Lastly, of course, Bitcoin BTC in at first trading at 4,032 and five cents, a nickel. Uh, that's up 0 0.07 on the day and up 1.39 points on the week. 24 hour trade volume was 9.2 billion circulating supply, 17.6 million now, 0.6 million now. Uh, market cap is resting at 70.9 million dollars. Sorry, billion dollars, 70.9 billion. Uh, and let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Um, kind of, kind of jagged jagged uh spark chart for the seven day like uh graphic chart mini chart it's uh, it just kind of looks like a bunch of jagged teeth um and uh, that's gonna do it for uh coin market cap um 
Let's move on over to the news, shall we? Uh, this, uh, these two stories just in nine minutes ago and 10 minutes ago. Uh, 10 minutes ago from Crypto Daily, Ethereum Classic ETC breaks critical resistance. Price continues to rally. We'll take a look at ETC in a minute. They were kind of way down on the list. And uh, nine minutes ago from uh, Bain Crypto, LTC, Litecoin price prediction 2019-2020, updated March 22nd. Yeah, so um, Bain, Bain Crypto uh, has... Uh, has released some analysis. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, trending stories uh, aggregated from Crypto Panic uh, two hours ago uh, from usethebitcoin.com. Western Union partners with Stellar to enable clients to transfer funds to mobile wallets. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, uh, I think um, I think we were like early in the podcast maybe like the fourth or fifth episode we had talked about western union and i think i'd have to go back and look but i, th I think they were there was something in the news about western union just being like anti-crypto having just a terrible sentiment about the whole thing and so it's refreshing to see them changing their tune if i remember correctly don't 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 quote me on that but like so many companies um you know there was a lot of like uh like anti-crypto sentiment in the beginning uh very interesting uh to see uh blockchain taking over the world and it will take over the world guys uh, it's just it may take longer than we all initially surmised four hours ago from newsbtc.com uh ripple xrp align well with islamic principles rain to offer support oh yeah because um they have sharia law and and uh and so uh, maybe uh, XRP works well in Sharia law. Five hours ago from investinblockchain.com, adoption, UPS announces blockchain integration for its merchants. Five hours ago from the dailyhodl.com, or I should say dailyhodl.com, after meaningful victory, Ripple will likely issue motion to dismiss XRP class action lawsuits as securities lawyer. Uh, seven hours ago from coindu.com, Western Union. Yeah, another one on Western Union, Western Union. Uh, so a lot of a lot of stories on the on the Western Union move. And then uh, 10 hours ago from coinspeaker.com, Amazon partners with Wordplay. Uh, is e-commerce behemoth getting closer to Ripple? Uh, so those are just a few of the stories aggregated on Crypto Panic. Um, and uh, we're going to be done with that. Let's get out of there. And uh, so uh, I kind of wanted to talk about um, some of the, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and, uh, and, and uh, a lot of interviews. And uh, specifically, I listen to a lot of uh, chat with traders, which I recommend. I, I listen to a lot of two blokes trading, which I also recommend. Uh, and so there's a, a handful of trading podcasts out there. Uh, one thing I noticed early on in the crypto space is a lot of crypto people and even crypto traders were not engaging in traditional markets, education. Um, and I, I, I always thought that that was a big mistake. Um, just because there's so, so much valuable information that is easily applied uh, to, to crypto. It doesn't mean that you should take everything you hear and just, you know, um, adopt it as, as fact. Uh, but I listened to a lot. And so I was listening to a couple of interviews today with Brett Steenbarger. He's a, I think I'm butchering his name. He's like a famous, uh, what do you call it? Um, trading, trading psychologist. And, uh, and I was also listening to a, a trader who's very prominent on Twitter, which for now will go unnamed. Uh, cause I'm not sure, uh, that person wants me. Uh, he's not like a published author or anything like that, so he may not want me name dropping. Uh, but it kind of basically goes to what's right, what's what's factually correct, and uh, what is opinion based. What how to know when something is like the right answer, like two plus two equals four, or two plus two equals two plus two and how to know when it's like adaptable, when a truth is not going to work for you um, and when your truth is different from others. So, cause you know, I'll listen to one, you know, third party verified 
trader make mention of a specific tactic or a specific way of trading. And then I'll hear another like equally prestigious trader making statements uh, that run in contravention of that other statement. Uh, for example, um, some traders may say, do not go and, and, and burn out your account you know, from the get-go, you need to uh, educate yourself as much as possible and paper trade as much as possible. And then you'll hear other traders, you know, of equal merit say nothing is going to beat learning in the market with real money. Like you need to pay for your, edu you need to pay the market for your education. You need to uh, get burnt before you can truly know how it feels. And, and, and I, I, I get it. I, like, I see the merit in both those arguments, uh, but they're obviously in contravention of one another, right? So, like, what's the right answer? And I, I got to tell you, I think that, that both are right and both are wrong. And that's one of those things that you're not going to come up with a 2 plus 2 equals 4 kind of answer for. It's just going to depend on you. You know, are you the type of person that is going to, you know, trade away a 5,000 account, $10,000 account, $100,000 account and lose your shit? Or, you know, like, are you, I mean, obviously, I think anybody's going to fucking lose their ass over, I mean, lose their mind over $100,000. Um, but is that necessary? You know, like if I start out not knowing shit about trading and I take a five or $10,000 account and then just burn it, like if I'm playing like a video game, never touched a like a like a like a brokerage site or or, or a chart in my life, and I just make a huge freaking trade and lose it all right away, you know, leverage and the whole bit. I, you know, like I mean, how much are you, how much are you gonna learn from that? Like I, aside from like being really pissed off that you lost a lot of money, like I don't. I don't see how you would learn from that. If you can take, uh, you know, like a month or two months or, or six months or whatever you need really and learn this shit as much as you can, you know, it, it's never going to hurt to know all this data. Now, obviously, like, and I think this is where the other side of the, the argument comes in, there's going to be like a point of like diminishing returns, right? Like at some point, you're going to learn as much as you can and then nothing is going to beat um, getting into the market, whether it be tr paper trading initially or trading cash or whatever, what have you. Um, so I think, I guess the moral of the story is I think it's like a balance for everybody. And I'm going to get off my soapbox here because I think I've talked enough. Uh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of things like this, right? Where, where, you know, it's just going to depend on you, right? And so, uh, so I'm not, you know, I don't judge these people when they say, oh, well, you only have to, you, know, you know, I mean, the best way is to, to use real cash in the market, to, you know, pay the market for your education. And uh, I, I respect people that say, learn as much as you can before you get involved, take your time, you know, give the market the respect that it deserves. Like, I, I, like I get all that. Um, but I think it's, it's uh, specific to each and every one of us. So, um, I'm gonna get off my my pulpit here. Let's uh, let's get to the chart. So uh, just to recap, we have been watching this all month basically, uh, and so uh, at the beginning of the month we had you know we were coming out of like this big move. Let me drag this over here. Well, let's look at the daily chart first, right? To put things into perspective, right? Because I see people like saying that you know there's all these positive signs in the market and stuff like that and i think they're looking at this chart i think they're looking at bitcoin and total like on the hourly i think they're looking at it on smaller time frames but you know when you really pull out and pull out and you kind of look at the market yeah there's some some bullishness but i mean really in comparison to what's gone on in the last year um uh, 
we're we're just in a consolidation uh, consolidation or accumulation period guys um we haven't broken any like previous highs on the day chart now this does kind of look like a like a cup and handle a little bit but we're struggling right here we're struggling at the top we've been here before you know and we've been rejected i think let me let me let me find the absolute highest high i got my magnet on okay so uh, since you know mid December, the highest we've gotten. Where the hell is my on uh, Coinbase anyway? Is approximately, and this is a, a high. This isn't a closing price, but uh, 40, 4238. and right now we're sitting at thirty nine eighty five and a half, approximately. Um, so, but when you, and, and it looks relatively flat compared to what's been going on to what, compared to what went on in 2019, um, things are relatively flat. I mean, there are like, like I said, some, some semblances of, of like bullish signs. Uh, but look, I mean, this was going on right here in February. We had like this bull pull and like a platform consolidation, right? And then the continuation broke out again and, you know, into the uh, in, into the upside, and then we had another continuation, further continuation. But immediately after that poll, you know, we dropped back down. Good news is we didn't drop down, um, making a new low. We kind of went into this kind of consol consolidation, right? And that's where we, where we are right now. But when you spend a you know a few days, a week, a month looking at the hourly chart, like things look awesome. But I think. <clears throat> I think sometimes people will, you know, focus on one time frame without realizing what kind of environment that time frame exists in. You know, if you're if you're if you're trading intraday or you know you're looking for swings, uh, it's kind of easy to to forget. You know, you know, I mean, this is basic stuff, guys. Like you always have to go back and look and see what environment you're operating in. Meaning, you always have to go to higher time frames and 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 get like greater situational awareness, basic stuff. Uh, but, it, but it, it, it's, uh, it's worth repeating. So anyway, we had those, uh, that series of bull flags, right? Which all terminated right around here, uh, towards, uh, about a month ago, uh, this, this time in February. And then we consolidated for a long period of time. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, uncertainty and then we broke down, um, Anyway, uh, once we took those highs and lows and from February and used it to draw a pitchfork, kind of came with this like nice little trend channel. Uh, and uh, I noticed that Bitcoin, at least on Coinbase, has been operating within this pitchfork really well. Um, back in, about about a week or two ago, you know, we started forming like this kind of um, wedge. And, uh, and I was thinking we we're going to break out either to the upside or the downside. And, and, and here we are, we, we broke out to the, uh, to the upside. Um, at the time I was thinking maybe this might be like a pull. And so I kind of measured it and I kind of took our high and, and, uh, like a day or two later, I took a low off of it. And so we've been, we've been operating within this range. We're ranging. Right, we're ranging between I'll tell you right now, approximately thirty nine forty three and uh, forty thirty six, approximately, and um, and so you know I was pleased to see that 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 price was operating within these highs and lows, but I also noticed that we never really came out of this uh, this channel within the pitchfork. Uh, if, if you're look if you're looking on YouTube, you can see, if you're listening to a podcast, it's basically like an upward trend channel on the hourly chart, um, that, uh, Bitcoin seems to have been in since the first of March, uh, up right up until today. Um, and so, and you, you can see that by drawing a pitchfork using the, the highs and lows in February, like it'll pop right up, should see it right away. Um. And so, uh, so once we go 
into that trend channel. So it's kind of like, in other words, there's two parameters here, right? So like we're operating within what looks to be a, like a platform, right? Horizontal platform operating within lines of support and resistance, horizontal support and resistance. And then we're also operating within this trend channel, right? Uh, this is kind of like upward bearish, I mean, I'm sorry, bullish trend channel, right? Which is interesting because eventually one of these is gonna have to win out, right? And that is gonna happen uh, no later than I'd say like the 26th or the 27th of March, universal time. Um, and, and so we're getting close, you know. Uh, it's Friday the, 20, the 22nd right now uh, in San Antonio, Central Standard Time. And I've said this before, I've said this in weekends past, Friday is always a little bit on the bearish side. If you look at the data, right? Like um, if you sign up for like, uh, like uh, tax services and, and uh, accounting services, through like coin tracking, they have a lot more than just, you know, those types of services. They have like real data uh, that you can use charts on, you know, uh, market history and stuff, uh, things that are really helpful. And so last I looked, which was like a couple of months ago, but I mean, this is like an aggregate over months and months and months. Uh, it seems that there's always a little bit of like sell side pressure on Friday and a little bit of buy side pressure on 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 Saturday. And actually when you put the data from Friday and Saturday right next to each other, it's greater than the difference of any other day put together. Um, and so, and I mentioned this last week, I'm not sure if that's because people are like, you know, weekends are selling their, their crypto on Friday, you know, to have beer money for the weekend. And then, you know, the, uh, the big boys come in and swipe up their cheap crypto on Saturday, maybe something like that. I'm not sure, but that seems to, it seems to, to have been operating in that way. Um, so we are still within, uh, this, this horizontal range of support and resistance that I mentioned before, and we're still within this, this upward trend channel, but you know, it can't be in both after what did I say, like the 26th, right? So, uh, this weekend's going to be interesting you know, it'll be interesting to, uh, see, uh, midnight over the next three, four days. It's going to be interesting to see, um, New York open on Monday. It's going to be interesting to, uh, uh, to see how today turns out tomorrow turns out. So, um, we're going to continue to monitor, uh, as always, and, uh, we'll come back on, uh, as needed. Uh, let's see here. Uh, eight minutes ago from Cointelegraph, major Latin American e-commerce company bans cryptocurrency related ads. Uh, Mercado Livre, a major e-commerce company in Latin America, has pro prohibited crypto related ads on their website. Um, I'll see how that one turns out. So uh, that's it, guys. I'm going to I'm going to open up the five minute just to kind of look at the minutia here, see what we're dealing with. Yeah, there it is. See, it's I mean, it's playing beautifully into uh, this trend channel as it has. We did dip out briefly uh, on the 21st of March at uh, 1500 UTC, uh, but we immediately came back in. We only closed outside of it really for one five minute candle. Um, so, um, so who knows if that's random or whatever, but I mean, it seems to have, uh, jumped back into the channel and, and uh, reestablished itself uh, inside that trend channel. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I don't got anything else for you guys. Um, you, if you're listening to the podcast, you'll hear me mention it in the end. But for those of you uh, watching uh, on either platform, uh, uh, Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, uh, Block Squawk is listener supported. So if uh, you'd like uh, and you want to uh, support the maintenance, longevity, and improvement of Block Squawk, you can head on over to anchor.fm forward slash Block Squawk. Block Squawk is spelled B-L-O-K-S-Q-U-A-W-K. Uh, and hit support this podcast button. And uh, I would appreciate it immensely. Uh, be happy to uh, put you shout you out if you want or uh, 
donations can be anonymous as well. Um, and uh, that's going to do it for me. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, you can see right here on the on the screen, I'm at Joel Benavides. And uh, that's it. I'm out of here. Good luck trading. Uh, if you're going to be trading this weekend, uh, you stops or don't. It's up to you. It's not uh, financial advice. And, uh, and that's it. Good luck. Cheers.